Oh, why am I angry? That's wrong. Well, maybe that's not wrong. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get, we'll get angry, I'm sure, as the night progresses. Uh, Bone Giorno. Bonacera. It is, uh, what is it? 8.06 p.m. I'm a whole minute late. Uh, that's no good. <clears throat> I'm gonna be trying to wrap up this plugin for its next ship date of middle of August. That's like one week from now. And that's my goal today. I have one relatively small feature that I can implement tonight, ship out a beta to people who need it, and then I have one very, very big feature that I have about uh, eight days to put together. Anyway, VTube Studio. No, 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 Lua, I asked you what Germo was up to. I know what you care about. You've, you've thought enough about programming today. Oh, Dot, hey. <clears throat> Welcome aboard, Dot. Uh, thank you for joining the Skeleton Crew. Uh, as they say here in the Underworld, if it does not read Rest in Peace on your tombstone, you get drafted into the Skeleton War. So I gotta thank you for your voluntary conscription. You're gonna save me from uh, having to wrangle some poor drafty. But you're already following. You're not missing much, I just do this every Saturday. I have my one bespoke stream a week, where I smash my face against code for about an hour or two hours, uh, and try and give you a little bit of insight into the truly defective ramblings of my mind. Uh, I <clears throat> Hello, Utah. Uh, Bona Sara. Good evening, good evening. Dot. What's this work? Shout out? Dot level. What has dot level been up to? Engaging in retro. The, the most popular game on Twitch, retro. <clears throat> That's exciting. Well, welcome aboard. Uh, Dot, since you're new here, I will give you the rundown on what we are doing tonight and what I do here in general. As soon as I can remember where my capture group hotkeys are. Capture. Nope, that's not the right one. There we go. <clears throat> LMAO. Okay, so... For the past couple months, I've been building a plugin here for good old VTube Studio, which I know you're familiar with. And as soon as Unity runs, I will be able to demonstrate it. There we go. It is a... Uh, Device, it is a plugin that connects your heart rate uh, via a whole number of heart rate monitor softwares and devices as a tracking parameter that you can use in VTube Studio. Uh, so with that, you're able to do things like get flushed. Uh, you can add like a expression trigger. Let's do angry above 120 BPM. So when I get really stressed out, I get angry. When I reduce my heart rate back to a normal resting level, I calm down. Basically trying to infuse a little bit more life into these soulless mechanical puppets that we all know and love. <clears throat> so I've got another feature that I need to get out uh, by middle of this month for reasons. Tonight, I'm going to be adding a whole bunch more tracking parameters because we have a couple. We've got like a linear interpolation. We've got one that oscillates back and forth from zero to one. Another one that does that, but slower for breathing and then your raw BPM. Uh, I've been asked to include ones that go from zero to one and then reset back to zero to one again, like a saw wave at varying intervals for use for uh, other, other things that people have in mind, I guess. And then most recently, the thing that I spent all night doing over the weekend is I added the ability to have multiple configurations per individual model. So like I'm, I'm loaded up as Skeletom right now, my singular only VTube Studio model, but you can have like a different profile for like workout and horror game and stuff like that. So my workout one, for example, I've just set to make myself get angry. No, no flushing. I'll get angry above the threshold and get normal back below it. Uh, we can go back to the default, load. You can make a new one, create a new profile. It'll make all this stuff fresh for you. Uh, this would be like horror games. And I would make my, yes, we want to rename it. This rules, thank you, yeah. This has been my little hobby project since about uh, January. It is directly inspired by other member of the chat, Lua V Lucky, who started doing workout streams on uh, YouTube, I think, and I had the offhand idea, wouldn't it be neat if you could uh, track your heart rate in VTube Studio? And then I thought about it for a while and it became less of a joke and more of a thing that I actually wanted to end up building. So it's nice. Uh, people send me clips that they have from this all the time. It makes me very, very happy. It makes me feel like I'm contributing to this fun space that we all play in together. So like a horror game might be something like 128, 128, and this would be my, uh, would be 
face, mouth, neck. I think those are my matchers for my my rig. And so then, as my heart rate spikes, oh, I guess I'm missing uh, head. Head. There we go. There we go. Something like that you could do. Uh, so you get like blue in the face for for horror games, but you want to get flushed for a workout. Add like an expression. When we get above 110, I'm gonna cry. Uh, so like what I'm doing right now. There we go. Exactly. Oompa Loompa. I mean, yeah, you can pick whatever colors you want. All the demos I have use red because that's what typical flesh havers turn when they work out too hard. Uh, but but uh, not me. I don't have a heart. I don't have blood. I don't have flesh. So this is all a cruel kind of irony, I guess. Uh, so let's put the, the default one back on. Loads up all the settings. Okay, yeah. So, uh, the two things that I want to get done before I ship this. Longing for a heart, basically. The two things I want to get done before I ship this are I need to get more parameters in here at the request of Lua. And I want to totally overhaul the UI on this. Because while it's functional, I think especially with the new uh, profile system that I added over the weekend, where you can, like, create a new profile and then like load and copy settings across profiles and things like that i think it's kind of getting away from me a little bit here a lot of the systems here were built for like very mvp approach like oh yeah and it, you know you gotta put in a token and we have a login button sure this all makes sense this is this is pretty straightforward but then more complex uh and longer lists they're no longer really intuitive i've got like hotkeys or uh, not hotkeys tooltips for everything but I think, I think it's getting away from me a little bit. Bond gave me a pretty cool draft of stuff that I could try and apply to make this a little more intuitive. Oh yeah, uh, one other feature on here. You, I think you did a good job. Uh, I'm going to try and take parts of that uh, and make it roll into this a little bit better. I just, I don't know how to convey like the profile concept very well to people. That's what I'm struggling with mostly. How you can like rename it and what what like a quote-unquote profile is i don't know that's what the readme is for i guess uh one other feature in here that's going to be in the new update that's not currently out uh, but is in beta is this has an api of its own much in the same way that vtube studio has an api layer that lets this plugin connect to it uh this plugin in turn has its own api so you can connect things to this plugin because i think this app is one of the most flexible methods of actually getting your heart rate data aggregated you can use uh, pulsoid you can use this other app called hype rate which i just learned about recently and added support for uh there's ant plus which is like a bluetooth style protocol that you can use a usb dongle for uh for like a uh, exercise gear that garmin makes that's cool uh there's the ability to now pipe in your own numbers via the api so if you have something even weirder that i've not accounted for you can get a credential for this and pipe data in from wherever you have it and treat that as your heart rate. And similarly, you can get it back out. So if you're not using VTube Studio and you've got another kind of proprietary character, puppet, viroid, what have you, uh, you'll be able to get these parameters back out in a way that you can digest as well as the uh, current state of your like hotkeys and uh, art mesh tints. All of that available freely. Uh, as the bottom of the stream says, you can get that at my itch.io page. Uh, and I'm aiming for August 15th for the next full release of this, which means I have to get these features done. I have to make a video demonstrating the new features. And I have to, I, or I shouldn't say have to, but I very strongly want to make a tutorial video on how to use all of this. Because as I said, I think it's getting away from me and it's becoming more and more of a complex beast and isn't very straightforward. Anyway, let's add some parameters. This is actually very, very easy, and I'm looking forward to it because it will be a walk in the park compared to what I had to deal with over the weekend for save data. That shit was a pain. Okay, so in the VTube Studio API, all parameters are uh, basically sending this kind of payload to a... Uh, to the API. You have an ID for what the parameter is named, a value for what it's currently valued at, and a weight of how much you should weight it at. By default, this is, I think, 0 0.5. So we send uh, values that it interprets as the minimum. 
this is what I understand it to be. Uh, so we've, we're going to add some saw waves, and there's also uh, these that I was instructed to add. I finally authenticated with the stream elements WebSocket and their success messages. You're in a age of dank memes, all alike. That fucking sucks. Programmers need to stop trying to be cute. This reminds me of, like, the Discord loading screen, where they'll say some weird gamer shit. Just tell me what I need to know, for fuck's sake. Standards are standards for reasons. I will say, you were in a dark maze, though. That's true. After watching you struggle with that for three hours. And multiple days over the weekend. That's true. Having your weird jokes be entirely backend, so only stressed out developers will ever see them, is truly a form of cruelty that I think is cruel and unusual. Uh, BPM. Ones. Tens. Oh, uh, ones. Tens. Hundreds. Yeah, I'm also very interested to know what it was. I feel bad that I wasn't able to like, give you more concrete advice. But I'm sure you understand that there's like a quadrillion moving pieces in even the most simple uh, program system. And conveying that over text without having a clear picture of the whole thing is, is very difficult. <clears throat> I look forward to the tweet. Okay, uh, so the plugin runs in a, a whole big loop that happens when you connect. Uh, so we... Once we connect, we can then create these new parameters and we get back a, a function if they're successful and we get back uh, an error if they're not successful. So I need to also make some parameter names. Where do those go? There we go. So these ones, tens, and hundreds parameters that I've just laid out are going to be the correspondingly uh, ones place, the tens place, and the one hundreds place for the actual BPM as separate individual digits. I think this is too long for a VTube Studio uh, Lua, can you use numbers in a parameter? Do you know? Parameter name? Because then I could do like BPM 1, 10, and 100. Because I think this is too long. You can? Okay. Actually, this is fine. This is 26 characters. That's a, that's under the limit. We're good. Just not in front. That's fine. Yeah. I preface all of these with the plugin they came from, which I probably don't need to, but it seemed like the easiest way to make sure they were unique, because I figured things like pulse and linear and breath would not be very descriptive. Okay. So we've got our, our parameter names. We've got the injection values that we're going to use. So what I can do is we just copy this. Once we connect, we're going to try and add more parameters uh try and create more of them there's going to be bpm ones uh param name param max is going to be nine uh bpm ones uh this is going to be bpm ones 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 <clears throat> pretty straightforward I think all of these are, yeah, max 1 to 9. But you'll never have 900 for your pulse. Hopefully. Hopefully. I think I set this up to only cap out at 255 as your maximum heart rate. Because uh, you're not a hummingbird. So I can just use it as a single bite instead of a whole... Uh, what is it? Long or int or whatever. 1s, 10s. So these functions, again, just create the parameter in VTube Studio uh, that you can then use at a later point in this function. We're going to need to uh, actually inject a value into these, these parameter objects. Tens. And then hundreds. I guess I'll allow it to go all the way up to nine as well, but I don't think that's ever going to be possible. Parameter ten. Hundreds. Hundreds.
now I get to see if I remember how modulo works, because I'm pretty sure all I need to do here... Uh, ooh, and I gotta add it to the API as well. That's also important. Uh, so let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, this dot BPM ones dot value is equal to this dot uh, heart rate modulo uh, that'd be modulo 10 I think no because then what is tens let's see if I remember how this works uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. No, it would be modulo 10, right? And then uh, to get this, the second place, I can't just use modulo for all of these though, because you'll get then you'll get uh, three, twenty-three, and one hundred and twenty-three at the end of it. So maybe modulo is not what I want. How do I get the digits? Uh, I mean, there are plenty of ways I could do it. What's the right way to do it, though? Is the question. I need like a substring function, but for this. Actually, maybe that's the right way to do it. Maybe I convert it to a string and then substring it. But then I have to cast it back to a number to get it to inject into VTube Studio. But related to this, for hundreds, when the value is less than 100, can you make the hundreds value negative one? I can, but I'm not certain that that's intuitive. But for you, I'll do anything. Uh, that's fine. You're the boss here. You're the one who's asking for this. I can do that. I just don't know if that's right. I guess as long as I write it down somewhere that that's expected behavior. Sure. Uh, okay, so that you, you're saying that actually makes sense in the context of Live 2D? Because I know nothing about how Live 2D actually works. That seems to me like it would be a weird thing to do. Like you get your code, your, uh, animation to run backwards if you did that, I would think. But, sure. And you only want that for hundreds? Or do you want that for every value? Like, if if, it, if your heart rate... Well, I guess you'll never have a heart rate of uh, 2, where you have a, a null in the tens place also. Oh, okay. I guess. I'll just do it for every digit so they're consistent, even though there's no no universe where you get a single digit heart rate, unless you are literally dying on stream. Uh, I like the idea of consistency though. Okay, how am I getting my digits out of this? Uh, we could do modulo 100 divided by 10. Is that right? Does that work? Will, will it like that? And then we do just divided by 100. I'm assuming this will always round down based on my my knowledge of how any of this works. Um, well, we'll find out. I think that's all I need to do, and it should automatically display on the... Where's my... No, not browser. There we go. should automatically display on the Outputs tab here. Speaking of, the Outputs tab is going to get very crowded tonight. Okay. Ones, tens, hundreds, all zeros. Uh, use our little slider. 36. Yeah! I'm a genius. Okay. 
you get six and three and zero. And you're saying if the value is zero, you actually want it to be, oh no, I can't just do if the value is zero. Oh, but I know what the whole value I'm trying to dissect is, so I see what you're saying. Uh, so I can do this. Um, I can add, I can solve this problem with ternaries because I love ternaries so much. This is my toxic trait is how much I love ternaries. Uh, let's see, this dot heart rate is less than 10? Question mark, minus one. than 100 minus 1 less than 1 easy ah well sure I mean I, I can or can not do that if you'd prefer doesn't make a difference to me you're the boss here you're the feature requester Oh, also, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, uh, Lua, is if you have no model loaded, there's actually a... You can make profiles for no model, i.e. no no VTube Studio model, which I think is relevant for you, because you're using Vroid for this. So this will uh, save your your configuration, your tinting, and, and what have you, if, if you need it. I Again, the, the data output outputs the matchers and your color and the interpolated value of the color as well as like hotkeys and stuff like that even though you can't choose like an expression to set you can have an expression trigger and just say like okay blast out an event above and below 120 etc etc and you can interpret that on your own uh so even if you're not able to set like specifics here you can set your color modules and things like that and you can even do multiple profiles so like you can have no model default no model workout, etc., etc., uh, like such. Okay, that was pretty easy. So now uh, we've got six, three, and negative one. Crank this up to 125. One, two, five. Easy, 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 easy. Okay, let's keep going. That was a uh, pretty good, pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, VTube Studio is very, very kind and lets you inject all those parameters at the same time so I don't have to make like 12, 13, 20 calls to get all these variables inserted. Uh, so the next one's a little more complicated. Next one is going to be doing saw waves. Oh, I should turn off my angry expression. I always forget to reset it. Oop, what'd I do? There we go. My hotkey for resetting my expression is also a number, which makes it unsuitable for... Uh, doing well, I'm in my IDE, but that's okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we've got these. Next up, we have to make the saw wave, which you're insisting I should call something different. I can only envision it as like a saw wave. You said it should be like an idle or loop. I feel like people are going to think a loop is going to be the pulse, where it oscillates back and forth, like a sine wave. Uh, internally, I'm going to call it a saw wave. I don't know what we actually want to use as a display name for it. Loop, okay. <clears throat> I'm going to call it the saw wave in my code, though, because that's what it looks like to me. I got to pretend like I know what I'm talking about after four years of undergrad for electrical engineering. Uh, saw wave. And then you said you wanted these in timed intervals, right? Where it's repeating... Uh, it goes from zero to one over X number of pulses, right? Uh, I think I th naming it what it should be called in live the context of Live 2D is fine. Because the way this is going to work is people are going to have like props or their model built around this kind of thing. And the rigor will just inform them like, this is what you're supposed to map this to, I think, for a lot of this. Things like breath, obviously, are, are names that, like, anybody... Because any, most people have a breath parameter, but you'd have to really have something special to make use of this. Okay. You'd hope. 
I wish configuring custom tracking parameters were was more user friendly, or people were less afraid of it in uh, VTube Studio. I feel like people never want to mess with that, and probably for good reason. A uh, model of any real sophistication has like hundreds or thousands of tracking parameters, right? So maybe not thousands, hundreds maybe. So it can be very daunting. Mine only has a couple, which is why I look more like a Muppet than a person. Uh, I like I don't have eyeball tracking. I don't have lip tracking. I just have eyebrows and a flappy jaw. So, you know. Uh, okay, so saw wave. Uh, one. That's going to be every every pulse. What do you say? You wanted one, five, ten. Give me the numbers again. Otherwise, I'm going to go digging in our conversation history. Was it, it was 1, 5, 10, 30, 60? Is that right? 120, okay. That's so many parameters. 1, 5, 10. 30. Sorry. Yeah, you better be. You better be sorry about this. Uh, 60. It's, it did make me think about how I want to alter my UI, though. I mentioned wanting to clean it up or make it more presentable. 60, 120. Uh, because once we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 more parameters, uh, 1, my tooltip can no longer include explanations of what each of these things do because it just is limited by space, so I have to modify that to be able to be a scrollable text area. And two, it's just going to get very, very crowded on the actual list itself in the app space. So I was I was trying to think about a better way to present these things. We'll, uh, we'll get there when we get there, though. Parameter. Uh, saw. One. Saw five. <clears throat> the weirdest trilogy. Saw five. Saw ten. I'm of the opinion that these parameters do not need to be in the UI because VTube Studio has parameter descriptions. You're so right, Lua, but what if you're not using VTube Studio? What if you're a weirdo who uses Vroid and wants to track these parameters from Vroid and you need to know what the current value is? To verify that they're like being output or something like that. What then, Lua? Fuck them. Yeah, you're right. You're probably right. I was thinking what I wanted to do actually was instead of having. Let me fire this back up, assuming my code compiles. Uh, is instead of having them all in this giant list where you can see their values all changing together in real time, I was thinking maybe just have this be a drop down where you select the name of the parameter you want to inspect. And then it'll have one line of text beneath it that shows the current value. So you can inspect them individually and you could have, you know, a tremendous list of parameters that you could go through, but you wouldn't have this giant list. The other thing is I probably should just add the ability to collapse any individual widget on the UI. So like add a little carrot next to the title so you can click on it to expand or collapse the individual module. And you'd have that for everything, not just the custom parameters. So this could be like collapsed by default and you could expand it to view all the parameters that you need to, to view about, etc., etc. Stuff to think about. That's what I get to do with my remaining eight days after I get these parameters implemented and send the beta off to the relevant parties. Anyway, back to implementing these parameters. Uh, what is it? Uh, 20, 30? Well, I need to make sure these have unique names. 20, 30, 60, 120. And once again, I, I'm angry again because I've turned on my 
<laughs> uh, my hotkeys. Okay, so we've got repeats. That's cool. We have the saw waves down here. This is quite the, the nest of code. Uh, okay, so now we go to the end here. I also have to keep reminding myself I gotta add these to the API at the end because there's a separate data layer that specifies these things. So I gotta do that as well, so that's fine. Actually, can Unity serialize a dictionary? Surely it can't. Hmm. Hmm. I could change the... I could make Nue really mad and change this from having these, like, strongly typed field names and just spitting out an arbitrary list, which is the uh, params value here, which is a list of injection values. And then serializing that. And that could work, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna do this stuff. We'll, we'll do one saw wave first. Uh, saw wave one. Dot value. It is notoriously bad, that's correct. I've learned that there's one for dot net now, which I should try and use, but. I don't think that existed when I started building this, in my own defense. Oh, this is going to be a slog. This is going to be such a slog to add six more of these fuckers. Oops. Uh, saw. We'll do one at a time. Dot saw wave one. <clears throat> uh, okay. Pop that in. This will be maximum value of one. Initial value of zero. Sure, sure, sure. And then. Uh, where am I going? So I think I'm going to need to make a class, like I've made this oscillating value class, I'll, I'll jump into this, which is a uh, struct that I can use where I just do a get value and it keeps track of how long it's been basically. Uh, so we've got get value, you tell it what the new frequency that you want it to oscillate at is, and what this does is it makes sure that you don't have weird artifacting if your frequency suddenly increases mid-cycle. It will only allow you to increase the frequency of oscillation once it completes the cycle and comes back to a resting point of zero, which is uh, very important for smoothing uh, things like breathing and what have you. Otherwise, your character will spaz out very, very abruptly if your heart rate spikes in the middle of a, a breathing cycle. So I need to, I think, make a thing like that again. Where do I put that though? Where is the script for that? This will be a, I guess. I'm gonna keep calling it a saw wave. What's happening? Who that is? What happened? <clears throat> what happened? What happened? I hear the church bells ringing. Uh, Asukitar XD. Uh, account created 16 minutes ago. Kind of suspicious. Uh, welcome aboard, tentatively. I'm not convinced you're not a robot. Uh, prove your humanity, I guess, here and now, or uh, suffer the blade. But uh, thank you, I suppose, for the, th the follow. <laughs> very suspect. Very, very suspect. Uh, okay, what was I doing? I was, I was trying to find where I put my oscillating value script that is in tools utils tools utils 
saw. Alright, alright, alright. So this is not going to be a mono behavior. All my homies hate mono behavior. Don't need that shit. And we're just going to have... Uh, So how do I want to... Ooh. Very loud automobiles outside. Like drag race sounding automobiles. Now, not the fun kind, not the kind that Lua likes. Like uh, street racing. Hmm. Very loud. Interesting. Suspicious even. Okay, so let's see. In the oscillating values here, we basically pipe in the frequency that we want this thing to oscillate at. And it would do that. And then we're saying we basically want to follow the same thing. So we need a time and a frequency variable as well here. And we're going to have a uh, public int float not int get value and the in is going to be the current bpm because we're saying we want this to go from zero to one every x pulses so i guess that's the frequency uh int new frequency time to do math okay um, radians is equal to 2 pi times frequency times time. I don't think I need radians, because I'm not doing a sine wave. Um, we just need to interpolate uh, float seconds would be 1f divided by this dot frequency. No, I can't. I can't keep recalculating that every frame, though. Um, uh, how did I do this? I should put these side by side instead of flipping back and forth. Time is radians. Or this frequency is zero. Zero. The fuck? Using ternaries really is my toxic trait. I didn't do myself any favors here. Oh, wait, you can just call time.delta time from in a non mono behavior class? Okay. Wait, that makes a lot more sense then. Uh, this dot time is equal to. Time equals equals or is less than or equal to zero. If it is, then we're going to do 1f divided by new frequency. Okay. Um, else we're going to do this dot time minus time dot delta time I think and then instead of frequency oh and this needs a constructor also uh, public saw value uh, int pulses per cycle So, uh, frequency... Shit, I have to do so much fucking math. Same, I love ternaries. It's nice, because you just get a value. You don't have to make a... 
an if-else tree, you just get a value. You can assign a thing. You always get a thing. My toxic trait is that I love ternaries so much. I love nesting ternaries and other ternaries. You should see the JavaScript bot I wrote for Discord. It is ternaries all the way down. I, I streamed that too, actually. You can watch my archives from like a year ago and see me really fuck it up and make myself miserable. Like, called shot, I'm going to hate what I'm doing a year, or not a year from now, like two months from now. And then it would bite me in the ass like clockwork, and I would never stop myself, still. Okay, okay. I'm I am already losing my mind on how I'm going to do this. Okay, so we want to create a constructor that says, like, you pass in, for example, uh, 60 or whatever. So that's going to be 60 pulses per cycle. Or, not pulses. Beats per cycle. Uh, so we're going to do private int... to one okay and then we I think need to I'm trying to think do I want to multiply so we say our BPM is currently let's let's do some easy math here so say new frequency is 60 we do one over 60 would be uh, the amount of time in one pulse okay so then if we wanted to do this, have this trigger every five pulses, we would want to, uh, what would that be? Multiply by five, right? Because then you'd have five over 60. Which is a larger number than 1 over 60. So it would be slower. Yes, that makes sense to me. So we're saying time is equal to... If we've run out, less than or equal to 0 seconds left. We reset it to whatever our new frequency is. Whatever our new BPM is. Um, Actually, yeah, Lua, while well, I've got you here, how exactly are you envisioning this works? Say that you have one of these things that is every 120 pulses, right? Are you envisioning that it would somehow dynamically adapt to when your heart rate fluctuates over the course of the time it takes to do 120 pulses? Or, or what? Because, like, for my oscillated value thing, it does not dynamically adapt. It only updates the... Uh, rate or frequency whenever it comes back to a zero position. Otherwise, you get really, really weird. I wish I could visualize it, visualize it easier. But you basically are moving where you are along the sine curve, and you get large jumps, which is not desirable for anything. For breathing, it would make your character uh, you know, vibrate uncontrollably. Like, like imagine you've got a, s a sine wave, right? And you're suddenly saying, oh, but your, your heart rate went from 60 BPM to 120, so you're now suddenly skipping ahead because the sine wave is getting crunched in half. It's squished, right? So now where you are relative uh, in seconds is a completely different Y value, you know? Ideally, it would jump with interpolation. Interesting. Interesting, okay. Okay, I can I can make that work. I think with a linear zero to one, that is less, but smoothed. Okay. Uh, I think with linear interpolation, that's less egregious. If you just have a huge jump, then you it is with like a sine. I think. Huh. Now I'm kind of. Not sure, but fortunately I have this single class that I can use to change the behavior for that at any point in time. That's that the smoothing can be done with BTS. I'm going to keep it this way for now. I'll probably update it later tonight off stream. 
after I decide what makes sense, but let me get something that actually works for the time being. Uh, so we're saying time is this. Okay. And we're going to do... I think I don't actually need this frequency variable. I think I can do just return math.lerp uh, 0 to 1 as a function of this dot time? I think? Yeah, I don't. I didn't think you could, but I trust you. So I was, I was, being your yes man and just saying yes. Of course, Lua. Of course you can. Value is equal to. Oh, I need to make an instance of this as well. Fun, 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 fun. Private. Saw value. Let's see if that works. Oh, wait, am I going to get it divided by zero error? If I multiply pixels per second. No. Wait, yes. If your heart rate ever hits zero here, that'd be divided by zero. We go saved by the bell uh okay value is equal to this stuff oh, what, what was i doing here with all this clamping heart rate over 60 Sure, whatever. Uh, this dot saw one dot get value. Let's see what that does. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna guess not good. Possibly even gonna crash. Expand. That's not right. That's not correct. Right, let's slow this down. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Let's let's slow this down. This still doesn't seem right. This is not going as I would think. Crank this down to 30. So it should take two seconds. Oh, this is working. Hey, Bong. <clears throat> This does appear to be working, but it stays on the one for quite a while, which is unusual. Wait, it's staying on one for two seconds and getting to one for two seconds. What the hell? What the hell? What? What? Why? Why, 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 why? 30... So we have 60. Oh my. What's up? That tilt is very... Uh, has me wondering what's up. Did I say something funny? <clears throat> if I said something funny, you have to tell me. Uh, 
I've never been funny. Thank you. Yes, I've never been funny in my life. That's correct. Uh, okay, so let's see why. What's happening here? So we're saying time is equal to... Is time less than or equal to zero? If it is, we reset it back to... Oh, wait. I'm a... Clown. I can't just use lerp here. Lerp is expecting this to be a value from 0 to 1. I need to normalize this somehow. But that's like, defeats the point. Because... Okay, so this is not... This is a number of seconds. This is not... A value... From 0 to 1. What the hell? How do I do this? Uh, okay. This is the number of seconds that it'll be... Uh, to complete... 1, 0 to 1. A single cycle. How do I get this to do what I want it to do? And we're saying otherwise we just subtract time delta time. Hey, Pooba. I'm doing math right now. You're just in time for the most exciting part of the evening. Where I get to write math. Do math. For God knows how long. Ooh, math. That's how I feel every time I have to do math. Ooh, math. Ooh, no. I'm trying to create a saw wave pattern. Uh, I'm all right though. Uh, it's very, very, very warm here today. That's the only thing to complain about, but I'm sure I am preaching to the choir because I believe you live in a much more uh, equatorial temperate region than I do. So I'm sure the heat I'm experiencing would be nothing to the likes of you. I am fine. I hope you're doing well as well. Oh, wait, actually. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it like this dot time? It's raining a lot. It, it's been raining here too, actually, which is pretty cool. I don't know that this is a Eureka moment. Uh, I might just be able to do... So I need to normalize this, right? Um, we've got our number of seconds, which is this. This part is good. And we need... Float value. This dot time plus time dot delta time divided by. I think that's going to normalize. From zero to one. Wait, no, wait, 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 what am I doing here? I need to do this dot time is equal to time greater than, or
greater than that. Uh, if it is, we do this dot. Uh, uh, we do zero. Tells this dot time plus time delta time. And then we're going to say I don't think I need the lerp because I think that's just what value is. I think. Okay, so we're saying uh, if your time is greater than your denominator here, i.e. you get some, you'd have a value of greater than one if you divided time by your denominator. Reset it back to zero. Otherwise, keep incrementing it forward by the number of times, uh, the number of seconds since the last frame. And we have this other value, which is your current time divided by your frequency interval. Uh, and so once the number of seconds have passed that is equal to this, value will be one. And this will either go from zero to one. And then we should reset. I think that's correct. I think that's correct. And that will actually dynamically adapt like Lua is asking for as well, I think. I don't know how jarring it's going to be though. Let's find out, shall we? Nope, never mind. I'm full of shit. I am full of shit. What's going on here? It's getting to... a very, very small value. Why? That doesn't make any sense to me. Why can't they all be as easy as just the digits of the... Uh, the actual heart rate? Stop time. I'm a genius. Oh no. I, ga I gotta watch G Reco still. I hear the third movie's on its way out, right, Bon? So it's like finally time to actually watch all the, the compilation movies. Then I'll be able to see where that comes from. Okay, so let's do some math once again. Uh, let's let's do some math. Let's remember to put my parentheses around the part where I actually need to do that. Hold on. Please stand by. Please wait warmly. I'm a genius. It was parentheses, gang. It was parentheses. It's always parentheses. Let this be a lesson to you. I was missing these parentheses. So what it was doing was time <laughs> divided by beats per cycle. Like that. And then times another very, very small constant of one divided by the frequency. But instead, I'm doing division times another... Test by rapidly changing the value. I'm a genius, Rosemary Sama. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. You got it, Lua. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell. I guess. Um. Oh, shit. Also. I don't have a way to view this value. Without a... Actually, that's not true. I can do this. I can rend my life asunder. And do this. And our input is this. Oh, it's kind of off screen, I guess. Hold on, let me see if I can move myself over. People though. Oh, that gets just completely cut off. Uh, uh, you'll just have to trust me on this one then. Uh, so if I rapidly adjust my value. Okay, so Lua. Uh, I can give you a, like a really concise demo of this 
in a second. Actually, 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 actually. Now let me show you right now while you're here. I'm this is the easiest way for me to do this. Studio mode. You're gonna want to turn off smoothing. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, hold on. Let me let me adjust my nested scene here so I can actually show you exactly what I want to show you. Pay no attention to the guy behind the curtain. There we go. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. So we've got our uh, thing going. And so if I increase the heart rate really dramatically all of a sudden, you can see it goes way faster, which makes sense. But if I suddenly slow it back down, it goes backwards. Speed it up. But if I slow it back down, it goes backwards for a second. You see what I'm talking about? And you said you want me to turn off smoothing. Sure, that's fine. That's not ideal, exactly. It like stops for a second. You, you see what I'm saying? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yes, it does. It does, that's correct. Or I guess it, maybe that's maybe that's not how I'm thinking about it speed at which we can reach zero or reach one whereas I'm calculating it as like a relative position along like a curve so then when the x-axis gets much wider or smaller but your x value stays the same. That's, so that's basically what's happening, right? Is imagine you have a graph, and it's a triangle, right? From 0 to 1 along an x-axis. And the x-axis is the uh, number of seconds that have elapsed. So if you suddenly say that you want to be able to go from 0 to 1 in half a second instead of 1 second, if your x position is unchanged on uh, your your position along the, the graph and you you squish your x axis in half though you're suddenly much 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 further ahead of the line than where you were similarly if you stretch the x axis to be twice as wide as it currently was if your x value is the same you will be uh you know further behind lower on the y value if you're following that line that's the problem that's the problem we're seeing here if we suddenly greatly uh, compress our x-axis, not a whole lot of problem. You get to the end of the line really quick and you, you speed up. But when we dilute or, yeah, dilute our, dilate, dilate our y-axis to make it smaller, suddenly it's very noticeable that your position along it is not where it should be. I know you are thinking about it in a different way than I am, uh, which is the problem. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how I would design code to do what you're asking, where it's like an acceleration, or velocity rather, rather than a position. I don't know. That's tricky. Yes, exactly. I understand. I'm thinking about it positionally, and you're thinking about it in terms of the velocity. I don't know how to program off the top of my head. A velocity thing. Um, uh, if, I, if I were doing velocity, the thing I would need to be modifying is the time variable. Delta time 
would be a function of your heart rate, I think. I think? Huh. Hmm. Maybe now I'll have to go back and change how the oscillating one works as well, because this is a profound development to changing how I understand or perceive numbers. You've really opened my eyes, so to speak. Metaphorically speaking, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Uh, let's go back to being in the corner. That's why they pay you the big bucks, yeah. Uh, okay. Hmm. So, this, like, works, but not in the way that we want it to. I'm going to comment that out because I haven't commit this yet. I'd hate to lose it. Okay. So... Our modification factor. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll get there. Well, actually, I can commit now, I guess. That's true. I did the ones values. Uh, the, the numeric digit values, so I can add that. Let's, let's commit. And Uh, okay, so then, what was I saying? Okay, going back to VS Code here. Comment all this out, because it does work, just not in the way that we want it to. Uh, we get rid of this, this one does not work. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So we're saying we want to modify the time increment, not the... I don't know what the other thing would be, the frequency, the hertz. Uh, my brain's going to megahertz in a little bit, actually, thinking about all these numbers. <laughs> um. So we're going to change how much the delta time is. So we're going to do float delta equal to time delta time times this, I think? And once again, I need to remember this. I think? So, again, say we have, we want to do 60 beats per cycle. And our frequency, our current heart rate is 30 beats per second. Wait, no, no, I have this backwards. I have this backwards. I think this is devising. Division. <clears throat> uh, which can be flipped around to be a multiplication, but that's neither here nor there. So we say uh, 60 beats per cycle. Our current heart rate is, say, 30, arbitrarily. So we do... Actually, I have no idea. I, this is too many mathematical operations for my tiny brain to do in, in a sequence, because uh, then this would give you uh, 30 divided by uh, 1 over 60, 
which isn't that just the same as uh, 30 times 60? That can't be right. Yeah, okay, it is 30 times 60. That's a weird way to write that. Why'd I do that? <clears throat> but I don't want to multiply by that much. That can't be right. Is it just this? Don't need that one over anymore? 60 beats per cycle divided by 30 gives you 2. Which would mean... Let's find out. Let's find out. Does this do anything? Let's see what weird mathematical function this actually ends up being. Who knows? Who can say? Not me, that's for sure. What the fuck are we doing here? That can't be right, okay. One, two. And I have this currently set to be really slow. It's supposed to be every 60 pulses. Wait, hold on. So if I have this set to every 60 pulses and my heart BPM is 60, it should take a m minute, right? To go from zero to one? Right? Oh, that's the other thing, is I'm not factoring in that these are beats per minute and not beats per second, I think. Hmm. <laughs> in either case, that doesn't seem to have been correct. As this goes up, it gets, like, impossibly fast. Okay, okay. Normalize this? Does this look more correct? I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers at the wall right now. Okay, this might actually be right. And now if I have that to approximately 30. I think it's going half as fast. And if I double that to 120. Close enough. It goes too fast. That's no longer correct. 
Huh. Open up VTube Studio again. Very, very strange. You need to have it. Why? Why half? What happens at the half? Yeah, it's just going apeshit right now. Yes, yeah, what I don't understand is where my math is failing me. But uh, despite the fact that I do nothing but write calculators all day professionally, I am not a mathematician. I am not. Uh, that's fine. That's totally reasonable. I'm just trying to figure. Okay, so our time is time divided by normalized. Beats per cycle, so again, we'll do our math. We're going to say 0 0.1 seconds passed. We're going to divide that by uh, 60 beats per cycle divided by 120 BPM, which is going to be equal to 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.5, which is going to be equal to 0 0.2. Should be a comment. There we go. Which means that when our heart rate is very fast, double our beats per cycle, we are effectively doubling the delta time. We're making time pass twice as fast, basically, in our pursuit to get to a uh, value of one. And so we say time is this value divided by 60 greater than 1. Because we need to get to 60 seconds because um, it's beats per minute, not beats per second. Wait, no, but that doesn't matter. Uh, what are my units? I need to be thinking about what my units are. Uh, 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 this sucks. But anyway, so time, number of seconds that have passed, divided by 60 to get to a minute. If a minute hasn't passed. But we should but I shouldn't be resetting based on time now, I'm thinking, right? Time is not the Back to science class. Exactly, right? Reset this back to zero. Why should we keep adding our delta? Yes. And not based on time. Time just keeps on ticking. That's correct. You're so smart, Lua. Thank you. Uh, and then we do... Uh, value. Uh, or actually, no, it's time is equal to this dot. Value. <clears throat> You're so smart, dude. All right, uh, this dot value greater than one, zero. Otherwise time keeps on ticking. That was the missing piece, you're correct. And then this dot value. Is equal to what? Because now I can't just lerp because time is going to be an arbitrarily large number, I think. Right, I can't just use lerp anymore. Because uh, time is no longer guaranteed to be between zero and one. It can just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So what are we lerping on? Or we're not lerping. We're just adding to value?
Are we just adding? Wait, hold on. Are we just adding? No, that doesn't make sense. I was going to say. And step or alert, depending on how you want to do it. Yeah, but we don't have. What's my, my T value for my alert is the thing. Because time is now. Not guaranteed to. Oh, wait, no. I can still use time. If it overshoots one, it's just gonna make the value hit one way faster. That's fine. Time is correct. Uh, that's correct. Thank you. I think that's correct. That's not correct. It's just ceiling at one now. T is equal to previous T plus velocity. Yep, that makes sense. That's what I have. Uh, I should hide my giant body. There we go. Show my tiny body. You reset to T when you hit one, yes. Yes, that I understand, and that's what I have. Uh, so we've got our delta, which is the velocity, I think, uh, which is correct. So like when our uh, beats per cycle is 60, and we say our current heart rate is 120, we'd basically be accelerating, or sorry, not accelerating, our velocity would be twice as much as it normally is. That's what we have here. Uh, then, studio mode <clears throat> then our time we reset if our value is greater than one back to zero otherwise time plus the delta the velocity like you said previous t plus velocity our value i had it set to math lerp zero to one and we return this dot value is there an equal to one do i need an equal to And it's just getting stuck at one, is the problem. Okay, that looks more reasonable. I think my delta is weird. Could be. If we crank this up to 120... Goes too fast. But maybe it's just because I have this again scaled for seconds and not minutes. I'm treating the frequency as a function of seconds. Uh, so what do I do here? I do that. Divide by 60 to get beats per second. No. Incorrect. Why is math so challenging? This feels like this should be obvious on how to do this, but it's just not. You're probably right, my delta is weird somehow. That's what I'm thinking as well. Well, I'm just gonna keep trying numbers until I see something that matches the pattern I'm expecting. So this makes sense at approximately 60 BPM. Close enough. This would take, I guess, a minute to hit one. Hmm. 
this looks like it's going at the a rate of one per second, which makes sense. But then if I double it, it just goes completely apeshit. So it does not scale linearly. My brain is fried. That's probably true. That's probably true. Did I say something in particular that's, like, completely egregious? <clears throat> I'm just running my mouth, which is all I'm good for, really. When we crank this back to... 60. Oh, uh, Unity, here we go. This looks like our little number here. Yeah, 60 BPM should be 1 per second. So wait, do you want this... You said you wanted this saw wave. This saw wave that we've got. Uh, let's, let's rename this to saw 60. Because we have one. <clears throat> uh, you said every 60 pulses. Right. We should get... Go from 0 to 1 every 60 pulses. Is that correct? That would be 1 minute. At a BPM of 60, that would be 60 pulses. No, no. I, I cranked... That's fair. I cranked it way, way up. Uh, and that's even what it said on the thing. I cranked this way up because I wanted it to be more visible. I figured it would be impossible to debug uh, one that's moving so fast. You're correct. That's fair. Uh, my brain is fried, though. It literally says repeat one on the UI, so... You had no reason to think otherwise. Uh, but I figured it'd be impossible to debug one that moves that fast. Uh, yeah, so something is wrong with my delta here. Which is frustrating. But I don't understand what. I just don't understand what. Beats per cycle. New frequency. And if I multiply this by 60, that should be fine. That would be the same as... Um, multiplying each of these by... Well, that would not actually matter. Something is fucky here. I just don't understand what. Divide by sixty over thirty. So the math makes sense to me that I've got here. Um, I don't know if that is, equates to off the top of my head. But it seems like multiplying the de denominator here by 60 shouldn't be multipl multiplied by delta time. Why would it be multiplied by delta time? Why? Delta time is a... Fraction. Maybe my brain really is too fried to be doing math. I'm sure whatever you're saying is very, very obvious. Delta. Okay. So we've... I'm just not thinking in terms of units. We have... Yeah, I have to write this out, too. I need a piece of paper, actually. Let's... Let's write this out. Because this is where you're saying, going back to science class and do my units. So we have... Uh, seconds... Divided by... 
uh, one over m divided by one over m, which should just equal seconds over minutes times 60 would equal seconds over seconds. I think. Yeah, there we go. Let's let's do paint together. We do get to watch me draw right with this thing. Got S. That's too thick. S divided by one over M divided by one over M. Uh, you can basically flip these. You get S over M paint yes and then so if you multiply the bottom by 60 you should get s over s i would think beautiful handwriting accomplished with my trackball i'm pretty sure that's how this works out right uh one or is this just unitless because you're Dividing a thing by itself, like do these just straight up cancel each other out? And then you have seconds over nothing. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what I thought. S over S isn't what we want, though. Yeah, you're right. You're correct. I'm like, getting embarrassingly frustrated by trying to solve this. This feels like it should be really obvious. What what do we want as our, or our numerator unit then? We don't want... We don't want time over time to be unitless we want it we're trying to make calculate velocity right so we need um but it would be position over time is velocity of course and position in this case is our value Deep in thought, thinking time, please. In the, the famous words of Pecora, thinking time, please. If we do this, this becomes time. This is unitless. This is just like a magic constant number. And then we could do...
This was so much easier to think about when it was just in terms of position along the graph and not as a velocity. So what I get for letting you talk me into this, even if you're objectively correct, and also the requester of the feature, and therefore the stakeholder. Hmm. You did. It's fine. I'm very susceptible to bullying. No, 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 no. No, the customer's always right. That's what they say. That's what they say. I'm sure this will come to me if I don't get it now, t tomorrow. Like, a uh, good night's sleep seems like the perfect cure for this kind of thing. But I will be very embarrassed if I end stream and don't have this working. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, value is still our position here, though. That, that part is still true. And we want position over time to calculate a velocity. So let's let's rename these things. We need a, a velocity. Thank you, Yinwa. Uh, I have not made any meaningful progress since the last time I commit, but I appreciate the sentiment. Also, hello. <clears throat> The last thing I got working was splitting out numbers for one of these things, like digits, tens, ones, and hundreds. That part's done. Uh, yeah, so I'm, right now I'm trying to calculate a si uh, saw wave, which is a, a value that goes from 0 to 1 and then snaps back to 0 for the fun little plugin that I'm working on to make myself get flustered. <clears throat> I'm trying to make a tracking parameter here that goes from 0 to 1. Uh, and then resets 0 to 1, resets, etc, etc. The other ones we added tonight were the 1s, uh, 10s, and 100s places for your actual heart rate, and we had all the other ones previously working, which is well and good. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know at all. Oh, I still have that enabled. I forgot. I never took the rings out because I was playing Sonic the other day. I can't believe nobody's gotten a ring so far. Last Sunday, I was playing Sonic Heroes on the PlayStation 2. Not a very good game. Better than Shadow the Hedgehog. Not a very good game, though. Uh, and so I put in a bunch of rings. RNG still running on Vanya. Yeah? You'll just have to keep hitting me, and maybe you'll get a ring. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. There we go. The RNG is just out of control. I think the bone is still very satisfying to whack. I gotta play more Sonic games. There was a, uh, a fan game that came out recently, which is Triple Trouble, but remade for 16-bit consoles instead of an 8-bit one. I'm looking forward to playing that. Sonic Triple Trouble uh, has Sonic squaring off against Knuckles, Eggman, and also beloved, beloved Purple Weasel, uh, Knack the Weasel. So, it's a super satisfying fact. Yes, that's why it's only one channel point. Golly, I have no idea how to solve this. I'm just completely stumped here. And it's all I'm going to be able to think about until I get it solved. I don't want to end stream not having solved this. I had such a good head of steam when I was like, ah, we get our positional numbers, and now we just have to add a sine wave, or a saw wave, and do that a bunch of times. But once we get the core calculation figured out, we'll be squared away. And here I am not being able to visualize the number because I started streaming at 8 p.m. I always do this to myself where I do the end of day when I have the least uh, capacity to actually think clearly, but I don't have any other free time to pretend to be a funny cartoon on the internet. Ugh.
So if we want our we our units are currently uh, this is so tricky to think about. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I really am stumped on this. This is like... Not... I, I, I cannot visualize what the function is supposed to be if it is not the one that I had already written. We increase our delta accordingly when our frequency, our current heart rate is... Let's, let's change this from frequency. Heart rate. So our beats per cycle over our heart rate gives us a funny magic number that we increase our unit of seconds by. Uh, and then we want to calculate our position from zero to one based on the number of seconds. Time is just itself plus the delta. So as our delta increases in speed, we get this number bigger, which in the lerp function drives us getting to one faster. Once we get to one, we reset our time and continue to add here. So this makes sense to me. This seems like this should be increasing velocity accordingly. I don't get I don't get what part of this is failing. I just need to keep moving the funny numbers around. Evidently not, because that seems to have stopped this thing dead in its tracks. Very interesting. And then if I have that to 30, approximately, is it going to go really fast? Okay, so I did the opposite of what I was supposed to do here. It's definitely still too fast. Some part of this needs to be... ...restricted. What part? What part am I missing? I just need to do like that. I don't know. I'm at the point where I'm literally just trying magic, magic uh, numbers here, seeing how that influences the function, and trying to make an informed decision from there. Okay, when I do that, though, it makes this, like, 
freeze in its fucking tracks. Which is obviously not correct. That's so strange. That's so strange. Okay, so let's, let's... Oh my god. I think I know what the issue is. I am dividing by an int. Which I think is actually causing this to become an int as well. Which would just be... Yeah. So when this becomes higher than this, it becomes zero. So our time stops, which is why we observe the freezing behavior when I spiked to 120, right? So I think I'm actually onto something here. I'm going to... I'm, what I'm trying to do here is I'm like, okay, stop thinking about things in terms of beats per minute and trying to calculate it afterwards. Have an instant afloat together becomes a float, though. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you divide a... I'm not sure. I know in embedded, in like C, if you're dividing a float by an int, it becomes an int. And conversely, I think if you do an int divided by a float, it becomes a float. I think it actually cares about the denominator. Um, let's prove this. Uh, 50f divided by... Uh, 120... Or by 100. And debug.log... 50 divided by 100F. Don't worry about this for now. We'll get there in a second. Could this be a, a huge breakthrough? Let's see what the debug log says. Maybe I'm full of shit. We'll find out. Alright. Where are them logs at? Okay, I'm full of shit. It looks like they're both floats. Never mind. In both cases, they get 0 0.5. I'm full of shit. Never mind. Never mind. I thought I was onto something there. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. They're both ints. No, no, no. No, hold on. Hold on. I'm, an, I'm, I'm the biggest clown. I'm storing both of these as ints. So the value is like an int divided by an int, which is definitely... Definitely not kosher. Uh, I need to be casting this as a float. Both of these as floats. Before I do the division. That'll do it. Um, and then I was correct in that this should be time 60, I think. Um, divided by 60, I think. That's what it is. I think. Oh, what did I have before? Whatever, it'll be ob very obvious in a second. I'm pretty sure. Um, ah, what a fool I am. I hate that. I hate numbers. Numbers are my worst enemy. There's just no good use for numbers. Okay. So at the thing we currently have it set... This should take 30 seconds to reach 1. Because we have it uh, for every 60 pulses. Uh, and we currently say we're about 120 BPM. And I would say this looks like it is probably on track to do that. Conversely, 
if I bring this uh, way, way, way down, this should slow to a crawl. It's not. It's, in fact, accelerating. So I have this backwards, I think. Somehow. If I bring this really close to zero, it's going to go really fast, right? Yeah, okay. And then... Should be the other way around. And it's slow. Okay, yeah, I've got the, I've got this inverted somehow. Times sixty. Does that magically do it? No, that's that's also wrong for different reasons. It looks like. Uh, let's not mess with those at all, in fact. And let's just divide... We've got too many friends. Divide time at the end by 60, yeah. Go from minutes to seconds. Or maybe the other way around. Does this speed up the higher it goes? Five. No. Do I still have this wrong? Okay, yeah, I still have this backwards somehow. Um, is it... 60 divided by time? No, because then you could still get a divide by zero. Which is wrong. Oh, wait, 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 This math still makes sense to me, though. Time times beats per cycle times beats per minute. So we do... This still makes sense to me, because if your beats per cycle is 60, like we have, and your heart rate's 120... Oh no, I have this backwards. I have this backwards. I have this backwards. What have I been... This is going to be an interesting VOD to go back to. My brain is completely fucking shot. Okay. Heart rate, 120, divided by 60 beats per cycle, gives you... I think this this must have been a uh, division before. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was division before. Okay, doesn't matter. You can just flip these things around. That's how math works. Okay, now it works. Now, now this is going to work just fine. Everything's good. Breakthrough exactly at 10 p.m. My brain's kicking on. Did I, uh, did I, I tweeted about this. I was up until 5 this morning because I drank the smallest amount of caffeine. Uh, okay, no, this doesn't work. This is going way too fast. Motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I drank, like, a single drink that had a moderate amount of caffeine in it at around 7 p.m. And that kept me up until 5 a.m. Just completely on the ball. The entire, uh, save system that I showed earlier was written last night and QA tested uh, against my checklist of, of features that need to work. Okay, so this is still wrong, though. Because now if I increase this, it's going to go slow. No, it's going to go even faster. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good on that. And now I just need to do the final trick. Joker's final trick here is divide time by 60. Yeah, so I was I was very, very awake last night, and I got a lot of work done that seems to actually be functional, because I, I had a checklist. Okay, there we go. Code works. If I crank this to the maximum, it goes quickly. It's kind of hard to see. I apologize on the, on the stream. I can't really blow this up too much more. But this is going pretty quickly. And then if I crank this all the way down to, like, 30, it goes much slower. We did it. <clears throat> this works. Wow. Wow, yeah, okay. So the final solution, the, uh, poor choice of phrase, the final answer here um, was this. Uh, we can get rid of this, these comments for math. What did we do? Uh, speaking of... 
How did the stuff I was talking about on Discord go? I have to... I run my mouth a lot, Lua, is the thing. I talk and talk and talk. What was I talking about? Oh! Right, okay. File name thing, sorry. I talk a, I talk a lot. I'm, I'm very, very extroverted in that regard. On the VTS Discord. Uh, yeah, so I ended up just... What I ended up doing was... Uh, in the previous save system... Files were saved to their model based on the model's ID, which was a, a GUID. So, like, your model has a display name, i.e. Skeleton, and then a unique hash, and VTube Studio sends both of those back to you. So I was saving model setting data based on using the file name being the unique hash, guaranteed unique. I figured uh, you might have, for people who have multiple models, they might all just be named Skeleton, even if one is sports attire and, you know, one is normal, or what have you. I figured they might just all have the same display name, or whatever. It wasn't guaranteed to be unique or file name safe, so I was using the UUID. But the problem now is, I want to have, then, multiple profiles per model, and I need to make sure each file that contains a profile is also uh, a unique file name. So, I w what I was trying to do was the unique file name with the model, which is the UUID, and then append the profile name to it, which also happens to be a UUID, and the result was to get a, like, 70 character long file name, which is not really, uh, kosher. So what I ended up doing is just, for the default profile, it's using the model ID as both the profile ID and the file name, and then every other profile just gets a random UUID with no association to the model in the file name, and so everything just has a 32 character UUID as the file name. So your save file folder is just going to be a flat directory of a bunch of UUIDs, and they're not really indicative of what each file contains, but hopefully people aren't manually manipulating them. I I'm, might revisit that before the ships if I have time. And put things in directories or something. It's, just, it's such a pain in the ass to get display names to be file name safe. Otherwise, I would just take the display name of the model, make a folder, and you'd be all set. Uh, but... It, there's just no guarantee. Pain in the ass. Okay, so yeah. Uh, we get our, our heart rate, normalize it. Uh, we actually don't need to do this because we can... If it's on the numerator, it's safe to... Uh, zero divided by something is safe. Uh, hey, Rodea. Uh, yes. I just solved a math problem that's been vexing, vexing me for about an hour. So yes, I'm having a good weekend as of right now. Uh, we made burgers tonight, also exciting. And Vaughn made really good fries that are like restaurant quality. These are things that have happened. I hope you're having a good day as well. What have you been up to lately? Let's find out. Spin the wheel. Rodeo. ASMR, interesting. Not typically my cup of tea, but I do respect the hustle. I hope that went well. <clears throat> ah, it doesn't matter if it's my cup of tea or not, though. Not everything is for me. Okay, so the math function we were trying to do here is writing a saw wave as a output, which is one that goes from 0 to 1, like a triangle, and then immediately drops back to 0. And uh, we seem to have figured this out. So now let me open up VTube Studio nice and wide, and... Let's see if this interpolates correctly with a wildly oscillating heart rate value. Uh, make big VTube Studio. Pop this open. Hit play on this. Oh, also, Rode, I noticed the other day you uh, you popped into Eisby's stream, which I was not expecting because I didn't know you two knew each other. Or maybe you don't. But uh, I was very happy. Maybe it's a small world to see you there. When she was playing a the Gurren Lagann Nintendo DS game. I thought that was cool. Okay, so if we wildly crank this up. Lua, you're so smart. Lua, your brain is so big. It works exactly like you'd want. This makes so much sense. I'm going to have to go back and change the... Uh, the pulse one as well. 
Yeah, this works exactly like you wanted. Oh, uh, yeah, let me show in Unity, I'm, I'm rapidly oscillating the heart rate between, like, very fast. And now slowing it all the way down. And it only ever moves forward, never backwards. You're so smart. This works exactly correct. Which means it's time for me to redeem Commit Reminder and commit this. Uh, but let me rename my variables to the things that they're supposed to be. Because I named them wrong for debugging purposes. Uh, so this is saw1. 1. Awesome. So yeah, I guess I'll have to redo the oscillation as well. Because the oscillation is a positional one as well. as Because that's how I was thinking about these. But this should be... Uh, velocity based. Oh! Awesome. Cool. I'm glad I'm glad that works out like that then. Uh Isby's really cool. Uh she's very intelligent. Uh also a tech type person by day. She's currently doing every Kirby game in order in honor of Kirby's 30th anniversary, which is exciting. That's the ongoing project for the year. She's playing every single Kirby game. Engaging in retro. All these retro gamers always engaging in retro. Never the specific game. I can never give them the proper shout out. But yeah. Uh, she's very cool. Great. Uh, I will I will change this later though. I definitely don't want to mess with this right now. Let me commit. Let me commit my code. Uh, git add. You and me deserve a treat. Uh, I don't... I don't have any concept of treats. I don't know how to uh, reward myself. To me, a reward is like doing what I'm doing right now. What are you going to treat yourself to? Punishment, I guess? I don't know. Uh, what is good in life? Pain? Yeah. It's the only way I can remind myself that I'm uh, alive. It is through eternal suffering and hubris. Get commit N. Uh, it's mostly you. You coached me through this. You are food motivated. I am extremely not food motivated. I don't like eating very much. For all the uh, cooking streams that I do, I don't actually really enjoy the act of eating very much. I am very not food motivated. Which I guess is how I end up like what you see before you. So if I wanted to re rebuild this uh, oscillating one to be velocity-based and not position-based. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, there's a reason I'm as uh, thin as I am, right? It's not because I like eating, that's for sure. Let me... I'm not angry anymore. I'm happy. We're in a good mood. There we go. <clears throat> We're in a good mood now. Uh, no, I, I, despite being heavily Italian, it's not part of my nature to like to eat a lot. <clears throat> so I'm not very food mo motivated. I'm always happy to share uh, that kind of thing. My pet tortoise is very food motivated. I think Fawn is also a little food motivated, a little bit. Not quite to the extent that Coco is. But uh, I don't know. I, I could not tell you what I'm going to do, quote, as a treat. I feel like I should try and solve this now, and then... Oh, the, the, the prize you made today were excellent, I gotta say. I truly gotta say. Okay, so wait. Hold on, we can, we can actually cannibalize a lot of this, I think. I think we can cannibalize some of this. I wish I had, like, been able to capture the texture and consistency of the fries that you made in a photograph because I was very impressed. I I wish that I could show the world how, how good they work. They took forever to make also. Uh, so this needs... Now it's also possible this is gonna look really fucky. 
if if we make this really really smooth and not refresh per cycle. Okay, so then. Oh, the problem with this also is that I I think I actually was passing in a frequency in the implementation here. Where the fuck do I even call these? Heart rate minus. So it's normalized to your breath. Divided by 60. Nino's home crispy fries. That's the thing I was trying to make. I don't know who Nino is. So I can't say I know. But the, they were very good. You did a great job. Yes, uh, I should explain that before I dive off into trying to solve more math. I'm actually, I'm not going to do this now, I don't think. I might actually just end stream because it's been like two hours. And like Lewis said, I, with her help, I was able to solve this problem. So uh, I should just end stream, but I will show you what I'm working on. No, 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 like uh, I, I got... Little. So right now, the thing that I'm trying to do is add a bunch more tracking parameters to, for VTube Studio to use. We were able to add ones that are... Let me make this not 255. Let's make this a normal number. 102. Uh, I added tracking parameters that are the 1s, 10s, and 100s place for your actual numeric heart rate. Uh, because you could use those for props or whatever. Uh, if you wanted to, say, have a LCD printout or some kind of numeric display... In uh, VTube Studio, you could use these to display them. And now I am trying to add a series of these saw waves with varying frequencies that go from 0 to 1 and then snap back to uh, 0 again, so they're triangular, as opposed to the oscillating ones that are for breath and pulse. So there's that. And then over the weekend, I added the ability to have uh, multiple configurations per individual model so you can have like your horror game or asmr or workout profiles and your default profile and they're all they've all got different settings that are you know configured for your model so you can have both the one model and a bunch of different use cases for it so you can do your ring fit streams and your asmr streams and what have you without needing to reset these things every time so that was a big pain in the ass. Saving data is the hardest part of making any kind of app, in my opinion. Something you never want to touch after you get it going. Uh, but, so yeah, right now I'm working on parameters. And so Lua, with her infinite wisdom, got me to make this uh, so that it scales really nicely even when your heart rate changes while it's moving. The previous oscillating ones I had only change their frequency once they get back to a zero point. So if you can imagine it as like a... a sine wave. Uh, let me pull up the paint again. Uh, UI, I mean, like, clearly I'm not amazing at it, because mine is not very good right now. So, yeah. If you have, like, a, a sine wave with your frequency, that's, you know, frequency. Uh, the way I have it currently is that if your heart rate suddenly increases, this would be, like, a BPM, it will only uh, concatenate the graph that's a really poor drawing of a sine wave. After it reaches a, a zero point. Hold on. Can I, can I... Just a sec. There we go. Zero. So it'll only start uh, speeding up after it reaches like your zero point. So that way you don't uh, squish where you are. Because the way I have it right now is... I'm trying to draw again. Hold on. So I've got your, you've got your graph... Uh, which is 
bottom one is time. Let's label these. Let's label our axes. Time. And then value. And then you've got your... Uh, so like your saw wave one, for example, right? Would be like this. Uh, and then it goes straight. Actually, let's, not, well, let's make this red. Like that. Boom. So this is a saw wave. In case anybody was wondering, this is why I keep calling it a saw wave. It is shaped like saw teeth. And that is just what they're called. The way that I was... Oops. Uh... The way that I was calculating all of these parameters before, because I was thinking about things in a kind of strange way, was you'd have time as a constant. You're always moving forward at a rate of one second per second. And so you're moving across here at a rate of one second per second. And so your, your value is just determined by where along this mathematical function you land, if that makes sense. Uh, so then if... Uh, your frequency of how often per, you know, one second you do this jaggy let's, let's do a different color let's do one of these that's uh, even more frequent so like that something like that, right? green is one that has twice the frequency if that makes sense if your frequency suddenly doubled while you were moving along this line and your function changed, what would happen is you'd go like, I'm following the red line and suddenly my frequency is increased. Now I'm following the green line and we cut it really short. And we now we're following the green line again, but the my heart rate is diluted. I'm snapping back to the red line. And so your, your actual value would be like all over the place. Um, or sorry, I'm snapping back to the red line jump all over the place uh which is a problem i was thinking about this positionally where time is a constant and the value is just moving along this line uh and the function itself is changing what lua got me to do because she's very wise is uh actually alter the speed of time so no matter what you only have this one function and it's just a matter of uh, how fast you're moving along it to get to your various values. You accelerate the, the flow of time, therefore increasing your velocity. You can just do this more quickly. So even if uh, time suddenly slows down, you're not jumping to a different frequency or different model, uh, a, a different function functional model. You're just not moving along the line as quickly, if that makes sense. That is what the big mathematical shakeup today was. I was doing things weirdly and so a lot of my code is designed so that it will only allow you to change the frequency once you get back to zero. Because no matter what your frequency is, at zero it's still the same. Uh, your, your position would still be the same along the y-axis. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, just wait until you get to a zero value and then you can change your frequency again. So it would look more like, uh, you know, this again but only after it gets to zero. You couldn't you couldn't change it mid midway through. Because uh, if you could, you'd get all sorts of weird stuff, like that, where you're like following a nonlinear curve. Anyway, that's, that's me using MS Paint to explain math for right now. Uh, I was thinking too much like squishing and uh, stretching this but it's just you need to move along it more quickly. Yeah, uh, I mean, the saw waves are easy to draw, right? The sine wave is a little more difficult, but this is just angles. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I got on that subject. That's the most lucid I've been all night, I think. Now, my, my big task is to change the sine wave function to also follow that same line of thinking, instead of just only allowing it to reset when it gets to a zero point. Though I think this looks acceptable, uh, it might not be what people want. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. Thanks for listening.
Thank you for listening. Who's pinging me? What's up? Well, I think I think that's gonna do it. I think I don't want to dig into this too much now. Uh, I got I got where I needed to go. My head's in the right place now. I can solve this offline. Uh, Lua, I will get you the beta for what you're trying to do here uh, in as short order as possible. Because I know you've got stuff that depends on this, and I want to give you time to test it. Uh, but yeah, that's going to, I think, do it. Well, I mean, it is a rush. We wanted to get this out by the 15th, right? So, that to me says that there's like a little bit of a rush. Just like a little bit. Yeah, no rush. Okay, I'll talk to you afterwards, I guess. Uh, but, yeah. I, w I mean, I would like to be done with this as well, because it's not like this is the only project I have going. This is just the one with the most immediate deadline, and the one that I think has the highest visibility. So, oops. Um, so I'd like to get it off my back for a while. And I'm not looking forward to having to make uh, trailer and tutorial videos for this. There's, like, a lot to be done. I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, so it all works. That's good. I'm going to send you guys off well on your way. Going to send you to a brand new streamer that I have never raided before, but I do know. Uh, raid. Because, and there's a very important reason for this. Go raid this person. She is playing Dota 2 right now, which is my most favorite video game. The one that I play more than any other video game in this world. And is why I'm such a broken human being. Uh, so, I think that's cool. I don't see too many VTubers play Dota. So, we have to appreciate and support them when we can. So, that's that's pretty much that. Uh, she's like a, a slime witch is her character. And her name is Menace, which is a pretty cool first name, in my opinion. If you get there and you've got the emotes, give her either the, you know, the pizza or the salute, one of these two. You probably know Menace. Uh, she used to be corporate, I think, and then her company dissolved. And now she's indie with her same team, which is cool. Uh, and I think she's big on the ASMR track, which again is not my cup of tea, so I don't tune in too often. But she's playing Dota right now, and I gotta go see what that's all about. Um, yeah, I've been long awaiting the Dota 2 stream. So that's gonna do it for me. Uh, bonus era, good evening. I don't know if I will stream tomorrow. I kind of just want to work on this, and I... Oh, well, the remiss would be just... Yeah, just throw the emote if you got them. I don't have, like, a fun catchphrase or anything, because I'm not that much of a cartoon character. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know if I'll stream tomorrow. I might, because it's fun, but I might also just try and get this cranked out as fast as I can, because there's no rush, says Lua, but I, it's a rush to me, personally. Thank you. Uh, yep, and with that, there we go. Thank you.